Cowboys Nation. Let me just first start off by saying Happy New Year. It's uh, It was a great way to ring in the new year. Cowboys winning on Saturday, Eagles losing on Sunday. Now we control our own destiny. So appreciate all the support. Had a great time out at uh, AT&T, sporting my new Jimmy Johnson shirt, feeling pretty good. It was such an emotional uh, halftime you know, ceremony. It was so good to see him get in there. And then you saw, I don't know if you guys saw the Fox uh, broadcast the next day, but uh, The Rock came in and had some nice things to say about Jimmy Johnson and how he impacted his life. So it, it was really just just a special day for Cowboys Nation. And to get the win, uh, it was even sweeter. And I know there's some controversy. We're going to get into it throughout, throughout the week, but just wanted to drop a quick video, just giving my thoughts on the game real quick is, you know, the end, that's where it's coming down to. And did he, you know, both guys check in or not? I can tell you, I was at the game. I heard the referee announce 70 uh, reported as eligible. I didn't hear any other players. So the Lions clearly heard it because I'm in the 200 level and they're out on the field. So I'm pretty damn sure they heard that as well. They didn't do anything about it. Cowboys weren't covering 68 because he wasn't uh, ruled eligible. So you don't know how the play would have worked out if they – called uh, if they reported him as eligible. So the notion that that cost him a game or this or that, it's all just, you know, just crybabies, uh, people just trying to find reasons. But more importantly, no one talks about the tripping uh, call that was on Hendershot on that drive. Had that been uh, upheld, then there wouldn't have been no, there would have been no last drive for them. The game would have been over. So uh, crying over spilled milk. We've been screwed by the refs. Uh, it happens. I'm, I don't think the referees screwed them on that one because it was announced pretty clearly. Um, so there's no reason behind it. But we can always go back to plenty of our games where where some things are made, especially the Philly game. We had the same thing where uh, it was a legal formation. We didn't have the guy. They said they didn't check in. And then you saw Dak go up to him and check in or the, or, or the line. I can't remember which one. But it just happened. So we're going to get into the game a lot tomorrow and Wednesday and then obviously moving on to Washington. But, you know, everything that happened Sunday in Philly, you know, they all came at me. And they call, all came out Cowboys Nation when we lost to Buffalo, when we lost to Miami, when we lost to the Cardinals. And lo and behold, uh, they're on a downward spiral. And I told you if you were listening to the show, they were going to lose to the Cardinals. Um, and sure enough, they did. Their defense is bad. Uh, the, the crazy thing to me, though, is just saying in, in, in some of the Eagle team's defenses, I'm seeing videos of, of uh, Sirianni needs to, is he on the hot seat? Did he need to get rid of him? I'm thinking, my God, the guy, you know, he led your help lead your team to the Super Bowl, and, and you guys are probably going to finish with 12 wins or 11 wins at worst for the playoffs. It's just a different world we live in now, man. You better win now or you're going to be gone. And we've got the same thing with McCarthy. I know there's a lot of talk, hey, if we don't get to the Super Bowl or get to the championship game, we got to move on from McCarthy. And I'm thinking, geez, he's uh, he's probably giving us back-to-back-to-back 12-win seasons, uh, something that hadn't been done since, you know, the the Jimmy Johnson era. So that that's pretty damn that's pretty damn good too. So I don't know. I don't uh, we'll we'll see what happens. But it is nice for a little payback because boy, you know, they talk their mess, they talk their noise, and and uh, you know. Shoes on the other foot. They didn't like it. They wanted they, they wanted Cowboys Nation to be humble. They, they you know they thought we we're be, being too too uh, boisterous and too obnoxious and overbearing, as I said in the video. And I told you I was going to be. And that's just the way it is. But being being honest, none of that matters if Dallas don't take care of business Sunday against the Commanders. It can't be a game where we're just sleepwalking. We're just going through the motions. We have to have that playoff mentality. Go in there and put a hurting on them get the game over with quickly and uh, and then secure that number two seed. And, you know, another thing, love to get your guys' comments as I'm seeing posts and seeing things of, you know, strategically, do we want the fifth seed? Do we want to lose because it's a better – I'm hey, look, man, Cowboys had not lost at home uh, since opening day last year. They, they, they obviously have a home field advantage. They played better at home. I'm, I'm rolling the dice at home. Um, you look at the matchups. You, you can't. You you got to – you better beat – if we can't beat a team at home, if we can't beat the seventh seed at home, we don't deserve to be in the playoffs, period. We don't deserve to go any further. So I always want the highest seed possible because all it takes is one misstep by the 49ers, and we have home field advantage throughout with an opportunity to even host a championship game if we continue to, to move on in the playoffs. So the notion of losing and getting a fifth seed and being on the road 
for pretty much the, the playoffs is not an option I, I, I would like. We're definitely a different team on the road. Now, the competition we've played is better, which sometimes skews the numbers. If you look at our five you know, road losses, four of them are to playoff teams, double-digit wins, but who are you playing in the playoffs? Teams with double-digit wins, they're in the playoffs. So I think the, the best path for the Cowboys, obviously, win the division, get the number two seed, got an opportunity to, at minimum, as long as you take care of business, host two playoff games, and then you roll the dice. If you got to go to the 49ers, you go to the 49ers. If they slip up, then someone's got to come to our house. So that's, to me, the best scenario. But don't want to lose focus on Washington because that's the, Washington would love nothing better than to beat the Cowboys. They're going to be amped up. There's no doubt about it. The way you cure that is you jump on them early. You jump on them early, then they're going to be already packing up and they're going to be worrying about the offseason and everything like that. So, you know, that's what you, you got to you got to beat them down quickly. So we're going to get into it and uh, definitely talk about it. But it was a special night hanging with Cowboys Nation. I always tell you tell tell people, you know, the game's the icing on the cake, being able to, to, to hang with with so many people and, and, and meet new people and. And just have a good time at Texas Live or if you're doing tailgating or, or you're at the Des Bryant tailgate, which I highly recommend is a great time. Um, that's that's the special part for me, making the trips and me as a fan. Uh, going to the game is, like I said, icing on the cake. Uh, but the icing's pretty good when the Cowboys win, let me just tell you that. So uh, just wanted to drop in. It's New Year's, so I'm going to chill. Went to the game, left at seven and, uh, 4 in the morning, my house on Saturday and flew back, uh, got up at four in the morning on Sunday. So your boy is tired, probably look like I'm tired, but I just wanted to pop in to say Happy New Year. Thank you for all the support, all the new subscribers. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe, hit the alert bell because we drop videos all the time, but we'll be live tomorrow night. Uh, we'll be live on Wednesday. We've got some great things coming up. One of the, one of the interviews I'm really excited about uh, that'll be sometime in January is Tony Thrill Hill. It's another for you younger generation. It's it's another old school guy that, you know, top five easily receiver in Cowboys history. Uh, he he led the team in receiving nine straight years. He's just one of those forgotten Cowboys that deserves the love and, and consideration, not only for the Ring of Honor at some point, but but even the Hall of Fame. He was that good of a receiver for the Cowboys. Unfortunately, he won a Super Bowl his rookie year. And then the Cowboys, you know, in the 80s uh, started to fall off. So I think that's one of the things that kind of hurt some of that era in the 80s of getting some of the recognition that I think they deserve. Just even the love within the family. But Tony Hill's a great guy. I know he's active uh, with the Cowboys. He does a lot of uh, appearances on tailgates and things like that. So it's going to be a lot of fun uh, checking him out and, and, and getting to know the story. And also uh, met Sherman uh, Williams. He's running back for the Cowboys in the 90s, backing up Emmett Smith, um, has a great story. So trying to work on getting something set up with him and then a few other uh, uh, good good surprises. But also, if you missed that Jimmy Johnson uh, tribute that we did, I know it's been getting a lot of a lot of run and a lot of positive responses. If you've missed that, check it out. It is it's you know, it's, the part one is an hour. We got kind of clipped off and had to redo the ending. But um the first hour is great. The messages from Bernie Kozar, Eric Williams, Jim Jeffcoat, Steve Walsh, Coach Campo. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Daryl Moose Johnston. It, it was such a special night. And the, it just shows the impact that Jimmy Johnson had on his players and really had on this organization. We'll give this we'll give give that some give that some love. And when he did that at the stadium, how about them Cowboys? It, it just erupted. So. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to check in, drop a quick video. Love all you guys. Can't wait to get back out to Cowboy Nation. Let's uh, get back to 18 T and hang out with Cowboys Nation. Let's uh, let's secure this two seed so your boy has some options to get back out there again. So appreciate everything. Have a great day. Happy New Year. Make it a great one. Don't let the hate, don't let the negativity uh, consume you. Stay positive and uh, let the haters hate because they hate us because they hate us. So I'll see you, Cowboys Nation. Take care.